All right, students, thanks for tuning in. We're going to take a look at velocity and acceleration vectors. Find this handout in your notes. We're going to start with defining again clearly what is a vector. So let's take a look at this first sentence. Unlike speed, which is only magnitude, example 10 meters per second, velocity is both magnitude and, you know, it goes in that blank, direction, right? And so I give you an example right here, 10 meters per second east. This would be the direction part of it. A quantity that has both magnitude and direction is called a vector. And vectors are shown using arrows. The blank of the arrow shows the magnitude. And this is a new thing that we're bringing in. It's the length. The longer the vector, the greater the magnitude. So let's take a look at our ramp, same ramp that we had last um, in our last video. Draw the velocity vector of the ball shown at each one second interval. Well, we know it's starting from rest, so the initial velocity here is going to be zero. One second later, how fast will it be going? You know, let's label these seconds here. T equals zero seconds, T equals one second, T equals two seconds, T equals three seconds, and T equals four seconds. So our velocity, our instantaneous velocity after rolling, accelerating for one second will be two meters per second. How do we figure that out? Because we know the rate of acceleration is two meters per second per second. So after two seconds, the instantaneous velocity will be four meters per second. After three seconds, it will be six meters per second. And after four seconds, it will be eight meters per second. Okay, notice how the vector got longer. In fact, proportionally, the vector for 4 meters per second is going to be half as long as the vector for 8 meters per second. Now, we're going to bring in a new vector here called an acceleration vector. An acceleration vector is showing how the velocity vector is changing. I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use red. So, because the velocity vector went from being zero to being two meters per second pointing down the ramp, I can say that the acceleration vector along this point is going to be pointing down the ramp. Acceleration equals two meters per second per second. Now, what about between two, between time one second and time two seconds? The velocity increased from 2 to 4. So still, during that time period, the acceleration was still 2 meters per second per second, per second squared. And the length of the vector I'm drawing is about equal to the amount that the vector grew from one second to the next. So let's take a look at it from 2 seconds to 3 seconds. The vector grew by about like that much compared to this original length here. Okay, so the amount that it grew by, that's the acceleration part of it. A equals 2 meters per second per second. And same idea, continuing on. What is, the, what is the main point here? It is this. As the ball is rolling down the ramp, it is experiencing constant acceleration of 2 meters per second per second. So we're going to draw that as a vector of 2 meters per second per second pointing down the ramp because that's the way the velocity is growing. We can also see that a little bit differently down here we have um, some vectors drawn. We have this vi initial velocity here. We have this change in velocity that's the velocity that is gaining to give us a new vector that's longer v final. So this delta vi this is what we really this is what the acceleration is representing. Because remember, acceleration is delta vi divided by time, which the time in this case is one second, the time intervals. Okay? So let's take a look at the opposite case. When the ball is rolling up, <clears throat> up the ramp. So let's say that I wanted you to have the ball, you're going to push the ball from the bottom, you're going to give it some initial velocity and you want it to come exactly to rest at the very top. 
So we're going to give it some initial velocity here. And now this is going to be a time zero. So now everything is in reverse. The ball is going to be rolling up the ramp. And we'll play a little game in our next class to see how good you are at doing that with our actual ramp. And I should include units here, seconds, 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 and seconds. Okay. So what would be the initial velocity, V0, that you would have to give it so that it rolls up the ramp and comes to a complete, perfect stop right at the top? So what we we'll call that um, V4. Um, well, uh, if, this is, if it's the same ramp with the same slope, then this time on the way up, it's going to experience what we call a negative acceleration. Um, because in this case going up the ramp it's going to be getting slower. So let's take a look at this here. Um, in four seconds we want it to lose all of its initial velocity so that it comes to rest at the top. So basically everything gets played in reverse. We want to give it an initial velocity of 8 meters per second. and I'm going to call that negative because it is going now in the opposite direction. One second later it will be going with a velocity of negative 6 meters per second. And I can draw that again with a vector that's a little shorter. After another second, it's going to be going um, still 2 meters per second slower, negative 4. And I'm going to draw that with a vector now that's going to be about half, should be half of what it originally was down at, about, at the bottom. And then we have our final here, velocity of negative 2 meters per second with a very short velocity vector. Then finally, no velocity vector. So this is the initial velocity we'd have to give it, and it works perfectly in reverse. Throw it with a speed of negative 8, and by the time it gets to the top, it'll come to rest, as opposed to releasing it from rest. All right, now, acceleration vector, going to go back to our red. Which way is that going to be pointing? Notice the ball is moving to the left but um, it's getting slower. So if we look carefully at what's happening with the change in velocity, this was the initial velocity going to the left, but in the next time second, the next uh, second later, it's still going to the left, but it's going slower. So what was the change in velocity? The change in velocity here was actually a change to the right, because you can think of it as this change to the right canceling some of the original to the left, leaves less to the left. So if we take this vector that I'm highlighting right now and we subtract it from the original velocity, we're going to end up with a shorter vector, a vector that is this new length for the final. When I say final, I mean at the end of that one second interval, so like 0 to 1 or 1 to 2. So the change in velocity is to the right. And we can say that the acceleration is to the right. So I can draw right here an acceleration vector. I probably drew that a little bit too long. I'm going to erase that and redraw it. Because I want it to be just representing the loss of 2 meters per second. So here we have A equals 2 meters per second. And let's look at these numbers, negative 8 plus a change of 2 gives negative 6. Negative 6 um, plus a change of 2 will give negative 4. So it's constantly experiencing a change of positive 2 meters per second each second. And that should be a square there. There should be a square on the first one too. And even here. So what we see in common with this example compared to the last one that we did is that the acceleration is still pointing down. It's still 2 meters per second per second. The only difference is, in this case, the ball is moving in the opposite direction, so it's actually getting slower from that acceleration. Or I should say that acceleration is that it's getting slower. Acceleration doesn't cause change of speed. Acceleration is change of speed, or change of velocity, to be technical. OK. now. Let's kind of summarize this here, because there's a lot there. So first of all, two things. 
you can have velocity vectors and acceleration vectors. You will only have an acceleration vector if the velocity is changing. And that acceleration vector will show whether the velocity is becoming more positive or more negative. So let's take a look here where you have an initial velocity in the positive direction. We usually call to the right positive and to the left negative. So if the ball is rolling to the right, we would call that a positive velocity. If it's experiencing no acceleration, then it's going to have no change in speed. And the direction would be to the right. If it's experiencing a negative velocity, but zero acceleration, it's going to be moving to the left. Will there be a change in speed? No, because there is no acceleration. What about if it's a positive velocity with a positive acceleration? That's like our first example, our first ramp. It's moving to the right, and its speed is increasing. If it's moving to the right with a negative velocity, then it's going to be moving still to the right. And we haven't seen this example yet. Ball will be moving to the right, but if it's experiencing a negative acceleration, that's the opposite of experiencing a positive acceleration. So this would be a case where the speed is decreasing. So this would be the situation where we had a ramp that was uh, flipped around so that the ramp was more like this. So the ball could be rolling to the right, but it'd be getting slower. So it would be having a velocity to the right, but an acceleration to the left. Let's finish up our table on the bottom. Negative direction, positive acceleration, that's what we saw with this ramp right here. So it's moving to the left and its speed is decreasing. And the last one, negative direction with a negative acceleration. Um, that would be moving to the left because negative velocity and increasing. So this would be a case where maybe your ramp was drawn like this. Ball rolling to the left, going downhill, getting faster. So it's moving to the left and the velocity is getting bigger to the left, so the acceleration is to the left. If you want to think of a pattern here, think about how in math we say that positive times a negative equals a negative, and positive times a positive equals a positive, and what's the other combination? Negative times negative equals positive. So positive times positive is increasing. Positive times negative is decreasing. Negative times positive is also decreasing. And negative times negative is increasing, like a positive. OK? You can think of this as like positive, negative, negative, positive. All right. So question on the bottom, what does the acceleration vector tell you about the direction the object is moving? Well, it tells you absolutely nothing. The only thing that tells you the direction that it's moving is velocity. Direction is told by velocity. But change in direction or change in velocity is told by acceleration. In other words, getting faster or getting slower. All right. So I have uh, I have two practice problems for you for the video reflection. Let's take a look. So here's your first question, multiple choice. An acceleration vector a tells you how fast an object is going. B always points in the same direction as velocity. C is always positive or D tells you whether the object is getting faster or slower. So put your answer choice right on your paper and then put it in into the video reflection. And here's the free response. A skateboarder is rolling along in the negative direction. He then experiences a positive acceleration caused by a force acting on him. From this information, will he be speeding up or slowing down and why? Okay, so go ahead and type in your, your response to that. And I'll see you guys